Hello everyone, in this video we are going to solve problem number 51 from chapter number 9 Stress Transformation in the book of Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hebler. So in this problem we are being asked to determine the principal stresses and also the maximum in place shear stresses along with average normal stress. We have to determine these stresses by specifying the orientation of the element in each case. So let's solve this problem. Since we know that we can determine the principal stresses and also the maximum and plane shear stress using the formulas that we have derived in our previous videos, or you can determine these stresses using the Mohor circle as well. So in this video, I'm going to solve this problem using the Mohor circle. So we know that in Mohor circle, we have uh, the axis. The x axis represent the normal stress and the y axis represent the shear stress. So this is normal stress and this is the shear stress. So in order to have the better understanding of the circle, we could be drawing the grid. Now looking at the current state of the element on which these stresses are being applied. So if you look at this phase, we can see that there is no normal stress are being acting, but there is a shear stress of 60 MPa. Since we have this uh, axis where we will be having uh, x coordinate as a normal stress. So in this case, the x coordinate or you can say the normal stress is zero since no normal stress is being applied at this phase. But we have some uh, amount of shear stress which is 60 MPa. We have to keep in mind with the directions since in this case we can see that the shear stress that is being applied is anti-clockwise direction. So we can uh, specify like we can specify that the clockwise shear stress is positive and anti-clockwise as negative. So in this case is anti-clockwise so negative 60. How about the other phase, this was the x plane or the x phase. This is the y phase or the y plane. Here you can see that we have been given with an 80 MPa normal stress, but the nature is compressive. So when we have compressive, then we really take it as negative and the shear stress has same magnitude of 60 MPa, but the direction is now clockwise, hence positive. Now we should shift these two points on this coordinate system of normal and shear stress. So this point, the first point of 0 and minus 60, so 0 normal stress and uh, shear stress of uh, 60, so we would be moving downward. But uh, how many units that we need to define first? So let's consider that the one unit of this grid is equal to 20 MPa. So this is 60 MPa, it means we would be moving downwards by three units so hence this would be the first point we can write here as 0 and minus 60 for the second point we can see that we have negative normal stress it means we will be moving in this way by four units because it's 80 and uh, clockwise shear stress hence positive so therefore over here this will be the next point so we can write it as minus 80 and 60 as the second point so once we will be having these two points then joining them together we will be having the diameter of the Mohor circle so once we will have the diameter of the Mohor circle then we can draw the Mohor circle so this will be the Mohor circle then so once we have drawn the Mohor circle then we can determine the required stresses in the first part of this problem, we are being asked to determine the principal stresses. So we know that the principal stresses are the one which will have the maximum normal stress and the minimum normal stress. The maximum normal stress is being named as major principal stress. The minimum normal stress is being named as minor principal stress. So it means we need to determine the value of stress at this point that will be the major principal stress and this will be the minor principal stress this is also required so before we determine the normal stress at this point we need to do some calculations first of all we should be knowing the position of the center of the Mohr circle since from the grid we can see that there are two units are there so it will be of 40 MPa but we can also determine the center of the Mohr circle is usually represented by normal stress with bar symbol. So that is being calculated as 
the normal stress at the two points two given points in this case the two given points are 0 and minus 80 so taking average of that will actually give us the position of the center of the Mohr cycle so sigma 1 is 0 but uh, sigma 2 is minus 80 divided by 2 so you can see we have got minus 40 MPA as the location of the center of the Mohr circle so this magnitude is actually of 40 what else we should be knowing we should be knowing the magnitude of the radius of the Mohr circle so that can also be determined using this right angle triangle where this distance is 40 and the distance from center up to this point is 60 so using the Pythagoras theorem the radius of this Mohr circle would be taking then the root of 40 square and the 60 square so on doing calculations we are going to get the value of 72.11 MPA as the radius of the Mohr circle so now we can determine the major and minor principal stresses since we know the radius so major principal stress will now be equal to so measuring it from center we can see that the distance uh, or the magnitude of the stress from center up to the region is minus 40 if you add with the radius which is 72.11 so i'm doing this calculations so we are going to get the major principal stress as 32.11 mpa positive it means it will be in tension then how about minor principal stress so minor principal stress will be calculated as minus 40 and since we are moving in the leftward direction so it will be negative radius which is 72.11 so on doing calculations it will be 112.11 mpa this will be negative that shows it's compressive so now we have determined the first part which is which is principal stresses the major and minor principal stress and we know that uh, at this point at the major principal stress and also the min minor principal stress we will be having zero shear stress therefore if we draw this then we will not be having the shear stress on the element now we have to represent uh, the element as well for that we need to determine the orientation now if you look at uh, this right angle triangle where we can determine this angle theta which is quite simple that uh, in this theta we have perpendicular as 60 and base as 40 so using 10 theta we can simply calculate perpendicular is 60 divided by 40 taking the 10 inverse we will be getting the theta as 56.31 degrees now this is on more circle but if we want to show on the element then it will be half of this magnitude it means 28.2 degrees so now this movement is actually anti-clockwise so this element should be rotated anti-clockwise the one that i have shown here so this angle is actually 28.2 Two degrees where we can see that the major principal stress has a magnitude of 32.11 and the minor principal stress is negative um, 112.11 MPA no need to show negative here since the direction is compressive now moving on to the second part in which we have to determine the maximum in plane shear stress so these are the basic things that we know about this Mohr circle now if you look at the Mohr circle the point where we are going to have the maximum shear stress will be this one or you can say the positive shear stress or clockwise shear stress and then the negative shear stress or you can say the anti-clockwise shear stress so it means we have to determine this maximum in plane shear stress and also its orientation so it's quite simple that we know there's a radius so the radius will actually be equal to the maximum plane shear stress so maximum shear stress is actually equal to radius which is 72.11 mpa so if you are on this plane that will be positive if you are on this plane then it will be negative the one thing that we we need to determine is this orientation of our orientation we can see this angle should be determined so from previous calculations we know that this angle is 56.31 degrees so then this angle would be 90 minus 
56.31 it means 33.69 degrees so you can see that this angle and this angle are exactly opposite so this angle will also be 36 33.69 so it means we have to rotate this element by a magnitude of half of this because this angle is a more circle so on actual it will be 16.8 and here you can see that this plane should be rotated clockwise so clockwise movement so we need to move this element clockwise by an angle of 16.8 in order to have the maximum in plane shear stress so this was the initial stage later on it is being moved by a magnitude of 16.8 degrees clockwise now if you look at the magnitudes of normal and shear stress on both the planes we just calculated that the shear stress has a magnitude of 72.11 so 72.11 mpa is shear stress how about normal stress you can see the normal stress on both the planes would be exactly same of 40 mpa this is 40 mpa because this is on the negative side and it's compressive this will also be 40 mpa so this is how we can specify the orientation in case where we are determining the maximum in plane shear stress here we are being also asked to determine the average normal stress so average normal stress is actually the one we have already determined the y bar which is actually in this 40 meter so average normal stress is 40 mp the average of the normal stress is 0 and 80 and its magnitude will be negative because of negative 80 compressive normal stress so we just have completed both the parts in which we have determined principal stresses and also the maximum in plane shear stress along with their orientation so this is all from this video i hope you have got the concept how we can determine the principal stresses and also the maximum in plane shear stress when we are being given with the condition of an element which is being subjected to normal and shear stresses thank you for watching this video i hope to see you in next coming videos till then thank you